I'm Mayor Lirian Gaylor Baird, and welcome to this community briefing on Lincoln and Lancaster County's pandemic response efforts. And I'll just pause for a moment while our folks get the camera ready. <laughs> I want to make sure we have that available for Margie Prop. Thank you, Margie, for being here once again today to provide interpretation for our community. And we, of course, appreciate all of you tuning in to learn more about how you can protect yourself, your loved ones, and our community. So my friend Roxanne is an occupational therapist who works at Madonna, and she's a huge fan of the musical Hamilton. So when I saw her vaccine selfie, her vaxi, I was delighted and not entirely surprised. Here it is, and in case you can't make out the details, she's wearing her Hamilton shirt, one arm is getting the vaccine while the other is pointed skyward in triumph. And her post reads, I was asked if I wanted to decline the vaccine. Do you know what I replied? I am not throwing away my shot. Roxanne's enthusiasm for her shot is precisely what our health team is eager to see as we undertake the monumental task of vaccinating our entire community. Public health experts tell us that in order for the vaccine to help us achieve herd immunity, we need anywhere from 70 to 85 percent of people, and ideally even more than that, to get vaccinated. Which is why our Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department's major focus right now is getting shots into the arms of as many of our community members as quickly as possible. We have not thrown away a single shot. Each dose our health department has received has gone into the arms of someone on the front lines of the fight against COVID-19. Immunizing, immunizing the public is nothing new for our health department, but immunizing the public on this scale is unprecedented for every health department across the country. And that's why for months now, Health Director Pat Lopez and her staff have been working with our medical community and other local partners to build the infrastructure we need to administer doses on a community-wide scale. A critical piece of this infrastructure needed to administer doses for an entire community our mass vaccination clinics. And we were so pleased at how our trial run went last Friday at Pinnacle Bank Arena. Thank you to the team at PBA, to Brian Health and CHI Health St. Elizabeth. Thank you to the Lancaster County Medical Society and to our private clinic and physician partners, as well as to all of our dedicated health department nurses and staff. Everyone made it possible for nearly 2,300 healthcare personnel to get their shots. This successful first large-scale COVID-19 vaccination clinic paves the way forward and demonstrates that as soon as we receive a greater supply of vaccines, we will be ready to get them into people's arms. Another vital piece of infrastructure we've built in order to turn vaccines into vaccinations is our local registry. And during the first 45 minutes that our health department's registry went live last week, 100 people per second tried to log on to register. And as of early this afternoon, over 62,000 individuals have registered successfully, fueling our optimism that the people of Lincoln and Lancaster County are eager to get their shot. We understand that as you register, the number one question on your mind is when can you expect to receive that shot? And the answer will continue to depend on the number of doses we receive locally. And to be clear about how that works, the state determines how much vaccine is allotted to us. They have informed our health department that for the foreseeable future, Lincoln Lancaster can expect to receive 3,900 doses per week. Keep in mind that with nearly 300,000 people in Lincoln alone, it will take many months to vaccinate everyone who wants the shot. We are hopeful that production will increase and that another vaccine will be authorized for use in the coming months. We will update you regularly as we learn more. Like you, we are eager for more doses and we want this to go faster. And in the meantime, and for what will likely be months, we all need to continue to take the precautions that keep us safe, that keep our kids in school, and that help our businesses stay open. We should faithfully wear our masks and wash our hands, watch our distance from others, while avoiding close contact, crowded places, and confined spaces. These next few months will test our resolve as a community but I have confidence in the people of Lincoln's strength and commitment to our community's well-being. And if anyone has shown strength and commitment to our community's well-being, it's our health director, Pat Lopez. 
Thank you, Pat, for being here today and for your leadership. And we welcome your information today that you'll share about local conditions and our pandemic response efforts. Thank you, Mayor. We just experienced an important and memorable week for our COVID-19 vaccination efforts. As the mayor mentioned, we kicked off our first large scale community clinic and vaccinated more than, actually we vaccinated 2,244 healthcare workers last Friday. The many hours of planning and preparation that went into the clinic helped the process run smoothly for those who participated and set the stage for clinics to come as we get more vaccine. We are fortunate to have a strong partnership with our healthcare community. And I want to thank all the healthcare professionals who assisted us in providing this safe and effective vaccine, as well as the staff at Pinnacle Bank Arena and our health department team. Dr. Brandon Chapik is a local Lincoln dentist who was vaccinated at our clinic last Friday, and he joins us now on Zoom to tell us about his experience. Over to you, Dr. Chapik. Thank you, Pat. Um, like she just said, my name is Dr. Brandon Chapik here with Capital Dental, uh, 27th and Old Cheney in Lincoln. I'm joining you here quick from our clinic. I couldn't make it today because with the snowstorms, we've been really scrambling to get patients uh, back in because we had to close the office down. Um, I first wanted just to remark uh, gratitude. Um, thank you so much for everything that uh, you guys have done as far as allowing the next step in the fight with the pandemic. Uh, this ability to get vaccinated for all these frontline workers and healthcare providers is a huge step in the right direction. Uh, it's going to allow us to have better protection for ourselves, uh, you know, prevent spread within our office, uh, amongst our patients. Uh, it's a huge benefit. You know, we've been really kind of fighting the, the losing battle as far as having just excessive amounts of PPE. Um, you know, we went out of our way and bought a couple extra filtration units for each of our operatories just to kind of help uh, eliminate any aerosolization and, and really limit the spread. Uh, we've been very fortunate in our office. We haven't had any faculty or uh, any staff members, any uh, patients or any contamination that's occurred. Uh, so I feel like we've been taking a large number of precautions, but just having the ability to go through the process and get the vaccine is going to just add that extra step for our entire staff. And I know they're extremely fortunate to have gotten that opportunity. Um, I also want to thank PBA Arena and a staff that were on hand because that was a very smooth operation when you consider the scale and magnitude of what went on last Friday. Uh, to be able to zip through a process like that and still maintain all the proper security precautions and um, you know public health guidelines and everything like that was was substantial. So that was amazing. Um, I also kind of want to take this time just to kind of address the public on the fact that while the dental realm may sometimes take a back seat to a lot of your general health needs or concerns, uh, we're really urging people to not let the pandemic be a reason that we lapse in our oral health care. Uh, we are seeing kind of an uptick of larger scale procedures needing to be done as a result of uh, people putting off things that could have been addressed a lot sooner with very, very minor interventive means. Um, the other thing that we are kind of cautious as a profession is the fact that coming to your dental cleaning, while it feels great to have those teeth nice and, and smooth when you leave, uh, one of the big benefits is just the fact that we do oral cancer screenings, soft tissue screenings, um, all those little things you might not actually realize your dentist is taking into account every time you step in. Uh, so our big thing is if we can do something to prevent either oral infection, oral disease, cancers, uh, anything like that that can prevent an additional overwhelming load on the healthcare system in the hospitals. That's kind of our area of the fight. So we're, we're really wanting to remind you that we're here for you. Uh, we're wanting to make sure that that aspect of your health is taken care of as it will, um, you know, ultimately lead to your overall health and can also influence your, uh, your resulting impact from COVID-19 is what they're finding on some of the studies. So, um, overall, I just want to, like I said, thank everybody that has made this possible, urge everybody to maintain, um, you know, all the guidelines that are in place and keep doing their part in this pandemic fight. And also realize that we do have a substantial, uh, substantial number of amazing people that are really taking your health into account and looking to protect you the best they absolutely can. 
Thank you, Dr. Chapik. As we conduct our future clinics, we'll make adjustments to our processes based on the priority groups we're serving and the number of people being vaccinated. We also launched our new online COVID-19 vaccine registration tool at covid19.lincoln.ne.gov, as the mayor said. We continue to see a great response, which is good, a good indication that many local residents are eager to receive vaccine. You can see the registration site is easy uh, to find on our webpage. The online form is available at covid19.lincoln.ne.gov. And people who do not have online access or need assistance may call the department's COVID-19 hotline at 402-441-8006 from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday to register. I want to thank the other city departments and county departments who are manning the phone lines and helping callers complete their registration. The phone has been busy since last Wednesday with close to 12,000 calls. Family members and caregivers have been encouraged to assist those who need help to register, and we've had many calls from them. We are also working with our community cultural centers to, so they can help clientele get registered from their communities. We also have multiple staff at the health department who are bilingual and representative of the community that can assist our community members. The simple electronic form is available in both English and Spanish. And we also have the interpreters available, as I mentioned, who can assist clients who speak the other languages. The form captures the basic information that will be used to help determine when the, an individual can be vaccinated. The information goes into a secure system and is strictly confidential. As vaccine becomes more available, we will contact people who are registered to, be, to schedule an appointment to get vaccinated. We continue to encourage people to get their COVID-19 vaccine as soon as it's available to them. And the registration is really the first step. It's open to all county residents, but those who are in phase 1B, in other words, those age 65 and older, and those with underlying medical condition and essential workers are encouraged, um, and medical conditions are encouraged to register soon. Vaccine supply is still limited, and we continue to administer the doses we receive as quickly as possible. Currently, the state's weekly vaccine allocation is 23,500 doses, which includes both Moderna and Pfizer vaccine. Out of that, we are currently receiving 3,900 doses a week, so that's 16.5% of the state's weekly allocation. As of this morning, the health department and its partners, Brian Health, CHI St. Elizabeth, Lincoln Surgical Hospital, and Blue Stem Health, as well as the long-term care facilities, have administered 19,100 doses of COVID-19 vaccine in Lincoln and Lancaster County. Vaccinations continue for people in Phase 1A, which includes healthcare personnel, emergency medical technicians, and residents and staff of long-term care facilities. And many are receiving their second doses. Hospitals have finished the last round of first doses for primary health care personnel. The majority of the long-term health care facilities in Lancaster County had given the first dose to residents and staff. Many people in Phase 1A are receiving their second dose of the vaccination, including health care personnel and our emergency medical technicians. Last week's clinic put us closer to completing our current phase. And we'll, we will be holding another clinic this week again at Pinnacle Bank Arena to vaccinate some additional health care providers in Phase 1A, including behavioral health providers, clinical lab personnel, and others. We are preparing to open Phase 1B as soon as vaccine supply is available and have been actively working with our community partners who will help support this effort. We do not have an exact date to share today, but I can tell you that we're, we are getting very close. We'll have more details to share in the very near future. The governor and the Department of Health and Human Services are directing state prioritization efforts based on the federal guidance. And they recently announced, as you've heard, a directive for phase 1B. 
which is to focus 90% of the vaccination on people who are 65 and older. Recent data shows that 65 plus age category is the most vulnerable to, con to coronavirus, so that group is prioritized. We are in the process of incorporating this directive into our phase for 1B, and we will outline additional details as soon as they are finalized. The Lancaster County Medical Society has been an important partner throughout the pandemic, and today we have the Society's current president, Dr. Eric Avery, joining us to tell us about the involvement of our local physicians. Dr. Avery. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Dr. Eric Avery. I'm a physician. I'm a cancer specialist at Nebraska Hematology Oncology and currently serving as uh, the, the president of Lancaster County Medical Society. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to come here and speak uh, for LCMS, or the Lancaster County Medical Society. This has been a, a continued partnership between the uh, LCMS, or the County Medical Society, and the Lancaster County uh, Health Department. We appreciate this partnership, and we've been involved in multiple calls and continued calls uh, uh, for uh, the area physicians and the, uh, the, the healthcare community as a whole um, in the vaccine protocol and, and rollout. As Pat was saying, as we look forward to getting into phase 1B, um, this will incorporate even more uh, people in the general population, patients aged over 65 or with underlying medical uh, conditions. The, the importance of all of this ultimately going back to getting more people to get the vaccine, getting shots in arms as quickly as we can. And Nebraska, I feel, has done a, a really good job from the standpoint of getting the vaccine out as soon as it is available for us. Um, many physician offices are also uh, in uh, conversations with the health department and assisting in the uh, uh, preparing for the vaccination efforts as it rolls out into the community. The uh, additional assistance was provided uh, for the Pinnacle Bank vaccination last week as well, and uh, we will continue to work with the Lancaster County Health Department as we move forward. The physicians' clinics and offices, and and multiple healthcare providers across the uh, across the town, are uh, and across the county are really looking forward to the opportunity to uh, really start rolling out the vaccine. But again, as a reminder, this really goes back to the vaccine supply. We can't give more shots until it's available from uh, from the government, and hopefully there will be more uh, vaccination options coming out in the in the near future as well. Um, I was talking to one of my uh, colleagues who's an intensive care physician today, and, and he was just, you can just see the look of relief in his eyes because he's uh, actually able to sit down between people, have time to catch a breath, and the, the intensive care units aren't uh, nearly as jam-packed with patients. And we, all, we owe everyone um, uh, our appreciation for being able to wear masks, uh, social distance, do the right thing, and, and um, protect ourselves and each other. Um, as we continue to roll out uh, the more vaccine, and as the health department uh, uh, has this plan incorporated into everybody's life, I guess the main thing that I would also say is we still need to make sure that even after vaccination, I would really consider having everybody wear their masks. Yes, a vaccine is going to protect us really well, but we also need to model good behavior um, and model appropriate precautions for everybody else because there's a lot of people that won't have mass, uh, won't have the, the vaccine available to them yet, and we all need to work together to continue to save lives, to continue to keep people healthy, and to continue to work together on this. So uh, I would really ask, sign up, sign up, sign up. Make sure you get on the registry, uh, uh, keep wearing your mask, protect each other, uh, social distance, and, and we appreciate the opportunity to continue to uh, take care of each other's health. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Avery. <clears throat> we really appreciate you joining us and for all your help to keep the virus from spreading in our community. As we mentioned before, a vaccination campaign of this scope is a major undertaking. There is a lot of new information being released frequently, and there are many moving parts at the federal, state, and local levels. We will continue to practice open and active communication and provide updates during these weekly briefings and through other channels. Vaccine is not yet available to the general public. When the vaccine supply increases and we are able to start public clinics, we'll make an announcement. You will also find the latest vaccine information at covid19.lincoln.ne.gov and on the city's Twitter and Facebook sites and through the COVID-19 hotline at 402-441-8006. And please keep protecting yourselves, your loved ones, and the community by wearing your mask, watching your distance, and washing your hands, and avoiding crowded places, close contact, and confined spaces. I also wanted to, today to give you an update on our risk dial. The status of our local indicators is that last week the COVID-19 risk dial moved into orange for the first time since November 6. Our local data continues to be on the improving trend and the dial remains in elevated orange for this week. The weekly number of new positive COVID-19 cases has now been below 1,000 for two consecutive weeks. The number of COVID-19 patients hospitalized locally has been declining and has been under 100 for the past seven days now. And with the arrival of the vaccine, we have one more major public health tool to beat this virus. If you look at our seven day rolling average from January 3rd to the 23rd, you'll see a continued decline from 177 cases on January 4th to an average of 124 daily cases on January 23rd. This is really a promising trend and as each day goes by with more people being vaccinated and more people and more people being protected from this virus, we want this trend to continue. The reports for new positive cases have been low over the past few days. We have had some delays with state reporting, but the main reason for the new low numbers is that very little testing took place over this past weekend in the last two days because of the snowstorm we're well aware of. Case numbers will most likely increase once testing resumes at a more typical level. Just as our weekly case counts have shown a decline, so have our daily hospitalizations of COVID-19. We have seen hospitalizations drop across the state and here in Lincoln, as I previously mentioned. There have now been fewer than 100 patients hospitalized for seven consecutive days, as you can see on the graph. Today we are reporting 66 patients hospitalized, with 49 of them from Lancaster County and 19 from other communities. On the hospitalization chart, you will see the overall decline of the new cases and hospitalizations. The orange line represents the seven-day rolling average of new cases, and the blue line represents the seven-day rolling average of local hospitalizations. You can see the decline since early January in both areas. Everyone wants to be optimistic, but hospitals are still moving forward with caution to protect overall capacity. The orange level on the risk dial indicates that the risk of spread is still high and people should continue to wear masks and avoid close contact, crowded places, and confined spaces. At this time, I'd really like to thank everyone for joining us, especially Dr. Avery and Dr. Chapik, and open things up for questions. Do we have any questions from the media today? Uh, hey, Mayor. Is, hi, Mayor. This is <laughs> everybody. Go ahead, Brent. Everybody at once. Hi, Bill. 
Oh, okay. All right. This is Brent with uh, Channel. Just a quick question. I, I don't know if it's better for you, Mayor, or for uh, Director Lopez, or both. But you know, you talked about uh, Lancaster County gets its allotment from the state each week, and it's consistent with its population. Um, but have you or Director Lopez uh, specifically asked the state for to receive more vaccine? I know the answer. Yes. <laughs> Every time we talk to the governor and to the folks at the state, we are of course expressing the need that exists in our community and it, director lopez can give you more details if you'd like yes brent we ask every time as the mayor said i've asked them to add an extra zero to that 3900 but so far that hasn't been hasn't happened and, uh, how much more, I guess, uh, how many more doses have, have you asked for? Is there, has there been a specific number or just as much as they'd be willing to give you? Well, we told it, we know what our population numbers are. For example, we have o over 45,000 individuals 65 years of age and older by the population census in Lancaster County. Now, some of those individuals may already have been vaccinated through long-term care or assisted living, but many of them are still needing the vaccine. So we have projections that we have shared with them um, about how many doses. And for example, this past week, uh, I estimated we would need about another 6,000 doses to complete 1A. So we're working through that um, and we'll see. Uh, this is Bill with 1011. Do you guys have a rough estimate of, of how many people you think qualify in Lancaster County for 1B? Well, uh, we have, we're working on the underlying conditions that are under 65. But one of the things that you should know, Bill, that our primary care physicians, I think Dr. Avery may have mentioned this, have worked with us through all the individual clinics, and they have provided data to us on how many patients they have in specific age groups. So we have that information as well as census data. Then if you look at who else is qualified in, we call them pods, but in 1B, like our, um, our firefighters and police, all those different groups, we have a number we've been working very diligently over a period of time, even before this pandemic. So we've been doing updates of all the individuals that would fall into those various age groups. So it sounds like supply is a really a real big issue because if, and I'm just trying to do some rough math, you'll need at least 100,000 doses to vaccinate phase 1B. And if you're getting 3,900 a week, I mean, we're talking several months of phase 1B vaccinations before we would even be able to move further away, right? But what we're hoping, Bill, is, you know, our other health departments across the state are moving forward at a faster pace just because of the interest in the vaccine and some of them because their health provider shortage areas. So maybe as they're done, uh, we'll have an increased allocation. The other thing is we're constantly monitoring, and I think Dr. Avery mentioned this as well. We know that Johnson & Johnson is another vaccine that we're hearing is close to being released. And so all of those things are going to make a difference, plus um, the president's initiative to increase the manufacturing of the vaccine. So we're going to just keep moving forward and get vaccine into people's arms as quickly as we get it um, so that the federal government knows we're serious here in Nebraska and we want that vaccine. You had mentioned last week that that the first week of February was a goal for phase 1B. That would be next week. Is that still a, a realistic goal? Well, I think I mentioned that uh, the first week of February, I hope would be we'd be finished with 1A. Now, depending on how we do with um, finishing 1A, that's quite possible we could move to 1B, but we'll announce that. Thank you, Pat. Uh -huh. Hi, Pat. It's Matt Olberding from the Journal Star. Um, I've got a question for you regarding ages. A lot of the health departments are focusing on people much older than eight, uh, 65 first. Like, for instance, Douglas County announced yesterday that they're going to start with people who are 80 and older. Other health districts have started uh, with 90 and older. Uh, at this point, have you guys 
decided on a plan for that as to starting with people older when you start or um, are you going to just open it up to anybody 65 and older? No, we're going to look at those 85 and older. And right now, in, just in the registry alone and looking at others, we have a, a couple of thousand of people in that age group. So we know that those uh, will be looking at age groupings as we move forward. And we're also going to be talking with our physicians and looking at some of the other priority areas. But we know the older individuals are much more vulnerable. And then one more follow-up question for you. Um, you guys have talked about possibly using Pinnacle Bank Arena again for mass vaccination clinics. Um, do you have other sites in mind or other large uh, gatherings for people in phase 1B? Or are you likely to work through health providers for those vaccines? Or do you have an idea as of now how that's going to work? once you get into that phase? No, it's not realistic for us to work with healthcare providers and providing allocation of doses just because of the requirements that are there for handling and the chain of control of the vaccine and the very limited numbers. Um, we have not wasted one dose and we're gonna continue that. That would be a, a really difficult burden to place on a private physician practice. But we are looking at other sites. I think I've mentioned we're looking at Lancaster Event Center as a site. And based on the geocoding we're doing, we may uh, work with some various sites for particular age groupings. So it's been really helpful. We have physician's name and we have patient's names and we have ages. So right now we're just doing the geocoding process and we've looked at other sites as well, Matt. So we'll keep you posted. Can you give me an example of what those sites might be? I mean, are you talking like senior centers or? Um... You know, I, we have to remember that a senior center may, may not, while that sounds really great, may not be the best location when you're having a large number of people coming in. We have to maintain the safety and public health practices. And so looking at a senior center, while that sounds like a really great option um, in looking at them, to handle safe for 2,000 individuals at one senior center is really not a, not a good option for the safety of the individuals coming in. So it needs to be, are you saying it needs to be a large facility? I mean, would you look at like uh, banquet halls? Would you look at um, empty large retail stores, things like that? Or are you more thinking of, of civic kind of center? Pinnacle Bank Arena, Lancaster Event Center, those kinds of... Well, some of them we're also looking at, you know, you have to think about everybody getting access, getting into the building, and some of the places that sound like we were talking about, what about the Shopco building, then we, you know, there's just a different uh, options that are available. We wouldn't want to go into a retail store because we're not encouraging people to go into the retail store that are in the most vulnerable population. So we're looking at a place where we can vaccinate people safely and we'll break it down by age groupings and allow um, a certain number of reservations based on our vaccine availability. Pat, this is Bill again. A question related to that. We've heard some concerns about accessibility or a distance that a person would have to walk, you know, if they are disabled or if, if they are older. Um, are drive-through vaccination sites something that's being discussed or something similar to, to help with those groups? You know, uh, that's a great question. And Bill, you know, uh, especially right now, I think we're all well aware of the weather in, in our community. And doing a drive-through clinic for some of our individuals just trying to get to their arm and take care of them really isn't that feasible at this point. But at, uh, for example, we're looking at some things like at the Pinnacle Arena, they have allocated the whole garage adjacent to the building. Um, we have made uh, adjustments so that individuals with mobility issues or other issues can be directly assisted at the closest pos possible area. And we'll continue to work through all of those at any site we're at. We're well aware of what the requirements are to meet the community, and that's always been a, a major priority for us in public health.
Pat, this is Andrew Ozaki from Channel 7 News. I was just wondering, what did you learn anything, anything from the Pinnacle Bank um, mass vaccination that you would do differently at all? Oh, we're doing a few things differently, um, adding a few more people, but you need to know the average time people spent there was 25 minutes, and 15 of those minutes were in the waiting area. So we're going to expand part of the waiting area, and we'll carry on these processes throughout the whole, whole time we're doing the clinics. We also were able to finalize and really evaluate the number of individuals we had working to see how well that worked and how we could uh, assess how much staffing we need. So it was really beneficial for that. And also messaging that people need um, to have to remind them, yes, you will get another appointment. You need to keep your appointment card. Just some basic information like that. We also, um, this is a simple thing, but uh, people that have EpiPens need to bring their EpiPens uh, with them when they come to get vaccinated. And also, if people have had another vaccine in the last two weeks, um, they should postpone receiving their COVID-19 vaccine. So we've used that to change our messaging when we have people register. I would just add to that, Andrew, that when Director Lopez referenced the waiting 15 minutes, she meant after they received their shots because, of course, they have a compassionate approach to the care with which they administer the doses, and they want to make sure that people are feeling good and are good to go, so they ask them to wait 15 minutes after the dose before they leave the, the clinic. So um, it ran really smoothly. We're really proud of it, and, yes, we're you know, looking at ways to make it even more efficient with technology at the in the coming weeks and months. Are there any other questions before we end today's conference? Okay, well, if there are no further questions, just please allow me to leave you with a final assurance that our health team is putting the infrastructure in place to get you vaccinated as soon as more doses of vaccine come through our doors and into our freezers. And with the current number of doses allocated to Lancaster County each week, it will take months, as you noted, for everyone to get vaccinated. So recognizing that thousands of college students have just re-entered our city from across the state and country, and knowing that we are in a race against time, particularly since a more contagious variant of the virus has made its way to the U.S. and is eager to take advantage of people who let down their guard, we implore you to remain vigilant in your efforts to stay safe and protect one another while you wait for your turn to roll up your sleeve. In the meantime, Please do get yourself and your family members ages 16 and up registered at covid19.lincoln.ne.gov or by calling 402-441-8006. And when your turn comes to roll up your sleeve, be like Roxanne and the Hamilton song. Be sure you're not throwing away your shot. Thank you. Thank you, Margie.